Hello everyone, Berthen here with some quick tips and tricks to improve your gameplay instantly. These are tips I've gathered by playing lower level players with a critical eye on what they did wrong and how they could improve those aspects of their gameplay. That being said, here are 6 tips and tricks that can instantly improve your gameplay. Map control is the area of the map that you have access to, being able to move to it freely without being hit by your opponent. For example, on Shipwreck, when you are in the center of the platform, you have more map control because you can use the middle of the map and the side of the map that your opponent is not on. You always want to be the one with more map control than your enemy because it impacts so many factors that can decide the game. When you have more map control, you can get more weapons and gadgets than your enemy, which lets you do more throws, and deny weapons which is especially important when your enemy does doesn't have a weapon. You also have more room to work with, which gives you more options than your enemy, as compared to being stuck by the edge of the platform, where you can't really do much. On top of that, having more map control means that when you're hit, you're less likely to be knocked off the platform and be in danger of getting knocked out. It's especially important when you're highly damaged, because you'll be pushed farther out of the platform compared to when you're lightly damaged. So you want to minimize how far you're pushed off the platform, so that you don't get knocked out as easily. When I play against newer players, I see a lot of them just using signatures way too much. Sometimes even more than they use light attacks, which on most legends will get them punished way more than what it's worth. Light attacks and signature attacks both have separate roles in this game. Light attacks are supposed to be fast and hard to punish moves that provides good damage and often good follow up potential for even more damage. Their downside is that they often lack force. Heavy attacks are often big powerful hitting moves that have more damage and greater force than light attacks. Their downside is that they often take longer to start up and has higher recovery time so they are very punishable. Therefore, light attacks are very good at lower damage ranges because there is little knockback so follow ups are easier plus they're fast and harder to punish so using them is a lot safer. On the other hand, it's much better to land signatures when the enemy is at higher damage ranges because at that point, signatures can push the enemy off the platform much easier and even knock them out of the map at orange and red damage. So the idea is that you use light attacks attacks when the enemy is at lower damage until they are at higher damage. Then you use signatures to finish them off. Note that I didn't say heavy attacks which includes signature attacks. That's because heavy attacks include air heavies called recovery and ground pound which has different characteristics than both signature attacks and light attacks. This tip is also not absolute because of the nature of signatures. Every signature is unique and some can be used early or are hard to punish so depending on the situation, it could very well be better to use the signatures even at lower damage damages. I've noticed a lot of players would try to force their ground pound to hit in places that are not very good to hit the enemy from. A good example is when the enemy is standing on the ground and you need more than half a second to reach them with ground pound, then they are able to dodge out of the way. If you use a ground pound in this case, then stop it early and you're able to move freely. If you don't stop it early, then you will hit the ground which adds recovery time and the enemy will punish you because good players can dodge out of a move they see coming half a second away and you'll be easy to punish. That doesn't mean you shouldn't ever hold a ground pound when the enemy is far away. You can hold ground pounds if the enemy does a move that takes a long time to recover from, like a long signature, and your ground pound can give you the speed necessary to punish them if you hold it for long enough. Ground pounding while edge guarding is also very good because you won't get stuck on the ground, and you can stop the ground pound if you miss and do a recovery to increase your chance of hitting the enemy. A successful edge guard also takes a stock from the enemy, so the reward is often worth the risk. Many players don't understand why their move just aren't hitting the enemy before the enemy's move hits them. This is mostly because the hitboxes and hurtboxes in this game are not exactly 100% based around the animations. Sometimes a move looks like it'll hit but it doesn't and vice versa. Brawlhalla uses circular hitboxes and hurtboxes, so the legend models aren't what they seem. They can be hit outside their character model most of the time. So it's best to go into training mode and look at that and understand it. While in training mode, there's also the option to turn on hitboxes which also often does not match animations. Once you understand the hitbox and hurtboxes, the game becomes a lot easier. You know the spacing to hit your opponent and where they are able to hit. With this knowledge, you can get into the correct positioning to be able to hit the enemy and also understand the timing to dodge the enemy's moves as well. If you know that the enemy's move isn't going to hit when they start it up, then it will be easier to get into position to punish them as well. 
Just this tip alone could probably get someone from tin to bronze, bronze to silver, or even silver to gold. Because there's so much reading involved in this game, what I mean by reading is the prediction of a move based on information given during the game, like the way you move and attack. In simple terms, if you do the same move more than two times in a row, then your opponent will catch on and position themselves to not only evade your move but also punish it. If you love jumping over the enemy all the time, then they'll see it coming. If the only thing you do is dodge behind them, they'll cover their back for sure. The only way to prevent this is to be diverse in the way you attack and move. Understand your whole kit so that you aren't countered once plan A fails. Have multiple backup plans. If jumping and side airing constantly isn't working, then throw in some grounded side lights. Maybe use dodge to throw off your enemy. Some general guidelines to be unreadable is to not use the same moves more than two times in a row, unless you know the third one will hit. Try to approach on the ground and in the air equally as often. Don't dodge too often. If you only dodge to approach, then the enemy will catch on and wait for it. That's the best time to walk up to them and just hit them. This tip is basically an extension of tip number 5, but it's so important that it deserves its own tip because it can turn around so many games that seems a lot harder than they actually were. When you're being edge guarded and trying to get back up, a lot of newer players tend to think the fastest way is the best way, when in most cases it's the worst way. Jumping straight back onto the edge of the platform the moment you're pushed off is the most obvious thing and good players will destroy you for it. They will ground pound you, throw bombs at you, down air you over and over until you're deep in the abyss. To avoid this, just make sure you're unpredictable. Remember that when you touch the sidewall, you'll get two jumps again, so don't always use the first two jumps to get back to the platform, because that is way too obvious. Chill out on the sidewall, jump left and right a little, force your enemy to do whatever they want to do without getting hit by it, then go at the least expected time. I hope this video helped you guys improve in Brahala. If it did, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this one.